Quanzhou is a city in Fujian, southern China. I went there on October 27, 2018 with family to visit relatives. It used to be a booming port city back in the days of the Maritime Silk Road. According to Wikipedia, it was China's major port for foreign traders during the 11th through the 14th centuries. Visited by both the famed Venetian explorer Marco Polo and the famed Muslim Moroccan explorer Ibn Battuta. Back then, it was known as Zaytan. Even today, when I geotag my photos, the city shows up as Zaytan on Facebook and Flickr's maps. There's an interesting footnote in Wikipedia, though, that there's some controversy in the 19th century among scholars whether the Zaytan written about in these foreign explorers' records was actually referring to Xiamen, a different attractive port city also in the province of Fujian. But supposedly, Chinese records were clear that Zaytan refers to Quanzhou, formerly home to an excellent harbor that slowly silted up over the centuries. Before 2018, I was last in Quanzhou back in the mid-1990s. It didn't have its own airport then. You had to fly into Xiamen Airport and drive two hours to Quanzhou. As what that aforementioned Wikipedia footnote said, Xiamen is the current Fujian boomtown, the current holder of the attractive harbor crown. Fast forward 20 years and there is now a nice little airport serving Quanzhou. Day 2 I went around some parks and tourist spots in Quanzhou city. There is a giant stone sculpture of the famous Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu in one of the parks. Another attraction in the park is this giant rock with Chinese characters on them in a viewing station overlooking the city. This park also has a Buddhist temple in it with a statue of a Chinese goddess out front and a giant reclining Buddha carved into rock. For lunch, we went to one of the supposedly top ginger duck restaurants in all of Chenzhou. They cook the duck traditionally in clay pots with coal, teardrop emoji for climate change. It was pretty good though. A huge part of China has gone cashless, even small corner stores and street food vendors. They use mobile wallets built into the WeChat messaging app, not cashless that's tied to your credit card like Apple Pay or Apple Card, more like paying with your Venmo or PayPal wallet to vendors. I like this sugarcane peeler contraption. The sugarcane vendors in the streets of the Philippines usually use huge knives to hack and peel them. After lunch, we checked out a few more tourist spots like the Quanzhou Kaiyuan Monastery, first established in 686 AD. It was known by a different name back then and only got its modern name in the year 739. It used to be an orchard of mulberry trees. It now occupies 80,000 square meters and is Fujian's largest temple. It's more of a temple complex with many pagodas than a single temple structure. Just pause the video anytime you need to read the information placards. After that, we hit up West Street, which is a bustling street of small shops and eateries. Yes, all cashless transactions using the WeChat messaging app's mobile wallet. The amount is drawn from your WeChat balance. It's not serving as a go-between and just withdrawing from your bank account at the fly at the moment of payment. Pretty cool. <laughs> Day 3. Headed to Uyishan via train. It's a town known for tea plantations and a big park with mountains and rock formations. You can buy a day pass or multiple day passes as it's a huge park. The way the park is laid out is there is a bunch of attractions inside and it's up to you to go in them one by one. Like this spot called Yixian Tian, the notable part of it is that it's really dark inside with only a narrow sliver of a crack up top. <laughs> There were some pretty exotic fruits at the local market outside the park. At night, we watched this musical set in an outdoor amphitheater. It's outdoor seating on plastic chairs mounted on concrete. The seats were pretty damp with dew and it was cold. Cold for someone like me from a sunny tropical climate like the Philippines. It was around 10 degrees Celsius, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So the entire musical is just about tea, tea farming, a journey to make tea, and all that. Since it's the main money-making expert crop of the town of Yishan, the name of the show is the Impressions Da Hong Pao Show. I think Da Hong Pao is the brand of the tea they make. I saw that labeled in the tea bags at the hotel. 
The production is pretty grand, like the kind of spectacles they put on at the theme parks. Hologram projections, laser light and special effects, and a huge cast of people doing choreographed moves. This was directed by the famous director Zhang Yimou. Day 4. After breakfast, we went back to the park to take the bamboo raft tour via water of the various mountains and rock formations of the park. Went back to the hotel for lunch after and then checked out two other attractions. At the Tianyu peak, you get to see the view down below from up high, so I got to photograph the other tourists on their bamboo raft tour, the same tour I took earlier in the day. There's a couple other attractions that I skipped and the last one I went to is this flat valley type spot with Chinese words carved in the rock face. This spot has more than 10 caves. Day 5, back to Chenzhou city via train, around a 2 hour ride. Day 6, it's November 1 and the hotel had some bizarre Halloween pumpkin carvings. This is the Chenzhou city skyline as photographed outside my hotel window. That night, we went to an interesting cafe that specializes in pour-over coffee. There are single-origin beans in the menu. There's an old-school barber's chair and a boombox as a decor. It's called local fish after this apparently famous fish native to Chenzhou that people fry up and eat as snacks. Day 7, I went to this historical replica town called Wu Dian Shi. Many of the Chinese migrants to the Philippines from the early to mid-1900s wave of immigration came from Fujian. That's why most of the third or fourth generation Chinese, I'm making this video in 2019 remember, are Hokkien speakers, or if they're not, their parents or grandparents are, rather than Cantonese or Hakka speakers unlike other parts of Southeast Asia. They came from all over Fujian, like Xiamen or wherever. My ancestors came from Chenzhou City, that's why I was there to visit my relatives in 2018. Now, Chenzhou City has a lot of boroughs or districts like Licheng, Jinjiang, etc. I know the first borough because that's where my relatives live, and I know the second because that's where the airport is. I don't know the rest. 
This historical replica town is in the Jinjiang district of Quanzhou City. Interestingly, a lot of the very wealthy Chinese Filipinos came from this Jinjiang district. When they became rich, they sent money back to China to build this historical replica town depicting old school houses from back in the day. If you look at the information placards, you'll see which houses were built by overseas Chinese Filipinos. These are classic southern Chinese family homes with a courtyard and various sections and bedrooms. Like there's a bedroom for the firstborn son, the second son, the third son, etc. I also had lunch in that historical replica town. Obviously, since it's a replica town, it's more like a theme park than actual preserved old houses. That's why there are restaurants and gift shops and cafes in the complex. The lunch was classic Fujianese fare, the same kind of food we eat as typical Chinese food staples in the Philippines actually, like lo mi, various mixed ingredients with noodles and soup, lumpia, kind of like a spring roll but not the kind that Westerners think of, barbecued pork with a lot of fat, etc. Had more Chinese food for dinner, but it's just regular Chinese food, a lot of seafood, nothing specifically Fujianese. Day 8. Checked out the Confucius temple that was built in the 8th century and moved to its current location and got its present layout in the 10th century. Went to another park with a lake after, then walked around the streets for a bit. There was a weekend flea market going on. The usual Taiwanese milk tea franchise chains are also present in Quanzhou, but I popped into a traditional tea shop instead. This place is very cool, and in some afternoons, they host oral retellings of the history of Quanzhou. Afterwards, I dropped by the Quanzhou Qingjing Mosque or the Masjid al Ashab. It was built in 1099 and restored in 1310 by a Persian pilgrim. At the start of this video, I mentioned that Quanzhou used to be known as Zaiton, spelled Z A Y T O N, back in the maritime Silk Road days, when it was the premier harbor port city of Fujian, before the rise of Xiamen's prominence as a global port. Quanzhou's old Chinese nickname is Tong City, a city named after a tree that was extensively planted there in the 10th century. According to Wikipedia, Zaiton is an Arabic word that's a kalk, which is a lone translation of that former nickname, Tong City. I guess the ties between the ancient Muslim traders from the Near East and Quanzhou were strong during the Maritime Silk Road days, when even its former Western name is not an Anglo name like the old name of Beijing, which is Peking, like Peking duck, or Taiwan, Formosa, but an Arabic word. There's even women making dumplings in the complex, but this is the kind without pork as Muslims don't eat pork. Here's another sugarcane peeler contraption. It looks different from the machine I showed in day two. The sugarcane street vendors back home in the Philippines are usually men as it takes a lot of upper body strength to hack sugarcane with the big knives they wield here. But with these machines, you can just feed the sugarcane into it and it's peeled. The three sugarcane vendors I saw in China were all coincidentally women. Dropped by a little private novelty museum called the Mind Museum for a bit, it houses the private art collection of some wealthy guy. Afterwards, I went to Yuanhe 1916, which houses cafes, offices, catering to creatives and designers, and event spaces. It used to be an industrial lot. There's a hype beast cat in Fall Supreme in one of the cafes there. This is Trenjo City Hall. Stop by the outside before going to a nearby seafood restaurant for dinner. Day 9. Flew back home to Manila. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please thumb up this video if you did. What spot did you like best or find most interesting? Please comment below. For myself, I found the sugarcane peeling contraptions most interesting. Please subscribe so you'll be updated when I upload again. See you next video.